Hey, it's Mark Keane here, and I'm going to show you now how you can now replace an on-prem domain controller environment, which is great because you don't have to worry about managing at least two servers for high availability. Now, just recently, the history goes, uh, the managed AD domain was available in Azure, but only on the classic VNATs. Just recently, uh, Azure has um, allowed access to having the managed AD domains on the Azure Resource Manager-based VNATs, which is pretty much what everyone's using at the moment. And so let's, let's go and take a look at how this works. Now, I've already set it up. I've got here my virtual network and I've got my domain services here, my managed domain here sitting here. So I've already set this up and I'm gonna run through the steps in the this website here, so just quickly. Alrighty, so the first step is where you go through the portal and you go this plus sign here and you type in domain services, okay? And you select Azure AD domain services. Go through there and go create. Then you give it a name here. Now the name of the domain name is internally resolvable only, okay? It doesn't have to be externally resolvable so you can put stuff here that you might have done before like dot local for example that's fine so go next and then the next step is where you go and configure the the network settings now because it is a domain it's a managed domain you have to tell it what network it's going to sit on i.e. a virtual network in Azure. So you can either create a new virtual network at the time of creation of this domain services service, or you can, down here, you can select an existing virtual network. Now, if we scroll down a bit further here, it's saying guidelines. Now, it's saying to use a dedicated subnet for the Azure AD domain services. Reason being is so you can then make use of NSGs for ACLs of security, network security, for your VMs without affecting your Azure AD demand services, that's the best practice. All right, next step, task number three, is where you configure the administrative group. And so this is the uh, administrators, administrators for your managed AD domain instance. So here you can add in members from Azure AD. So by default, there's admin here, so you can add in other members if you like, that's fine. Now, a point to note here is the fact that because it is a managed instance of a domain, then you don't have domain administrator or enterprise administrator permissions. Now think about this for a second. When this is set up, and we'll show you this in a second, when this is set up, you can actually go through the domain controller container in the domain when you open up Active Directory users of computers and you can see two domain controllers in there which have been named com completely random like it's it's been set up as a service for you. And the good news is Microsoft manage all of that so that you don't have to worry about the high availability, the backups, all that sort of stuff, it's all taken care of. And because of that, you don't have the full access to the domain as you might be used to. Now, you can do other most other things though, however. So you can do stuff like joining computers to the domain, um, you can do group policy. And the other one here I've got as an option here is you can integrate Azure AD Domain Services with an RDS deployment. So you can actually set up remote desktop services, right, because that requires a domain, and you can set it up in the cloud and connect it to a, a domain which is a managed domain up in Microsoft Azure. Now, it does say down the bottom here, you might get a few errors when it comes to licensing, which, which pop up, but it says here that you can safely ignore those warnings and it won't actually kick the users out. Alrighty, so there's a link there, we'll add this to the, the notes of this video. Now, if we go back to the, uh, to the instructions here, so we're up to number three. Okay, so this is the uh, DC administrators group, the domain controller administrators group. So you add the people in there that you want to give access to it. Alrighty, so you go through there and go next, and then you gotta update the DNS settings. All right, so after you've done all this, uh, you've gone through and gone create. Now it's saying here that you need to update DNS service settings for your uh, virtual network. Now remember by default on a virtual network, if we go across or down here, we've got this option here, which is default. So when you set up a virtual network in Microsoft Azure, the DNS servers are not normally configured. You use Azure's default DNS servers, but however, because you've got a new managed instance of a domain, 
on top of that virtual network, you need to tell that virtual network, like, for example, DHCP, to say, all right, don't give up, give out Azure's DNS service to the virtual machines, give out these custom DNS service to the virtual machines. So that, so that way, when the virtual machine is added to the domain, it can resolve the domain name. Okay, we'll take a look at that in a second. Now, the other thing that you need to keep in mind as well, if we go to step five here, it talks about here, password synchronization to Azure Active Directory domain services. Now, this part here sounds complicated, but it's not really complicated because once you've gone ahead and created the domain service, okay, the managed domain in, in, in Azure, and you've attached it to a directory in Azure, then any accounts in Azure Active Directory that you'd like to utilize with this managed domain, you need to just go through and reset the passwords. That's all you gotta do. So go through here, change password, reset the password, and what that does, it triggers then Azure AD to send the hash of the password to the managed instance of the domain. All right, and then you can safely use those accounts uh, against your managed domain. All righty, that's it, that's the setup. So let's go on to have a look in the portal, what it looks like. Here's my managed domain here, I've used .aad, you could use .local. If we go into here, it's not showing me to use the DNS servers on the overview screen because it's I've already done that. But I can go to the properties here and I can see that, yes, this managed domain is a part of this virtual network here. And here are the two IP addresses in my subnet, which has already been, which has automatically been allocated as a DNS service. That's fine. Okay, and have a look at my virtual network. This is it here. This is all stock standard, nothing new. I've got one subnet as part of this demonstration. As I said before, it's probably best to have a separate subnet for the domain services. And if I go to Azure Active Directory here, you'll see the group that I was talking about before. So go users and groups, go to all groups here, and there is my AAD DC administrators group, okay? so. As I said before, like you've got to go through and reset passwords for any user that wants to be uh, to use services on the, the managed domain. So, for example, if you want to have a user log on to a server on the managed domain, which is already added to the domain, or if you want to simply use a user account with privileges to add the computer to the domain, you've got to go through and reset the password uh, for each of those accounts. So the hash is transferred across to the managed domain. So here we go here. If I go to members here, <clears throat> you'll see my account is part of it. So there I am. And I've already gone through those motions of resetting my password. Okay, so now my user account has got access, not domain admin, it's got enough access to add computers to the domain. So let's do that right now. If I go to this server here. All right, here's a server here that I've set up just recently. It's pretty much brand new. It's on the same VNet. Everything is set up for DHCP as best practice. You can't and you shouldn't set uh, static IP addresses here, otherwise you're gonna get yourself into trouble and get locked out. So again, both of these are set to fully automatic. And if we have a look at the details here, the IP address is one of the IP addresses on my network, which is uh, up here, dot six. And then I've got my two DNS servers here, which are the two DNS servers of my managed Active Directory domain. Okay. Now, because all that is all that is set up, I can now go through the motions here as normal and add this server to the domain as you would normally. However, the difference is I'm not having to worry about managing uh, two servers. So I type in the domain name here, the fully qualified domain name. Oh, look at this, pops up with a username and password. So I put in mark.keen at the full Azure AD domain, so I can either go dot, uh, .com dot .au like that, or what I can do is use the other way around it, and I could put in at the beginning here, the shorthand version, so that and then backslash. Either way, it will work. Put the password in hit OK and restart. Now it's gonna say welcome to the stratvest.aad domain. Take a few minutes, there it is there, nice nice one. And then I'll hit OK again and restart the machine. Now this is not gonna to take too long to restart. Now while it's restarting, I'll pause the video just briefly and I'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like because I wanna 
install the administrative tools for Active Directory. And I want to open up Active Directory users of computers. Okay, I'm back. Service restarted. In fact, it didn't take long to, to restart. I probably didn't need to pause the uh, the video. Uh, and so I'm going to log in now for the first time ever with my Azure AD account. Okay, so not to be confused with an account on the managed Active Directory domain. So let me just type my password in. All right, I'm jumping in now. Yes, it's accepted the, the credentials and I'm jumping in for the first time under this account. I can see here it's the same display as as what's in Active uh, Azure Active Directory. Okay, let this sign in. Now, what I'm going to do is um, just so you know what it looks like under the covers. And yes, it is a proper domain, not like uh, Azure AD, for example. I can go up here, go manage and add in the management roles for this box for Active Directory. So here we go. I'll go through here, go next, uh, next, because it'll be a feature. And I'll go to what is it here? Role um, remote server admin tools. Here we go. And if I open up the role administration tools, ADDS. Okay, that's what I want to install. The AD administrative tools. Now this is gonna not gonna take that long at all. All right, installation has succeeded of the administrative tools. So I can minimize all this and open it up. Actually, before we do that, let me just show you this what it looks like. So system and advanced system settings, computer name, there we go, domain. It's like it normally looks like on-prem with an on-prem domain controller, exactly the same. So let's go and have a look at the administrative tools and open up Active Directory users and computers. Here it is here. Wait for this to open up and it goes straight into the managed domain. That looks there awfully similar to the managed domain that we've set up. So if we go to Active Directory Domain Services, uh, there it is there, stratfest.ad, and go back to the virtual machine. There it is, exactly the same. See, open this up. Okay, so let's play around with a few things. Now, what normally would be the first thing you do is possibly add yourself to the domain admins group, which is in here. So here's our domain admins group. So if I double click on that and have a look and go to members, notice here that it's grayed out. Yes, I've added myself into the DC administrators group, which is in Azure Active Directory, but I don't have admin access to the domain admins group on this managed domain. Now, here we go. Here's another thing to look at. Domain controllers on the left hand side here. Oh, look, I've got a couple of domain controllers here. I didn't build these. These have been built by default for the managed service. So if I could double click on it and have a look, I've got read access to it. I can see that, yes, it's a global catalog. The operating system is Windows Server 2012 R2 Data Center Edition, but I don't have to worry about this because it's not my problem and Microsoft manage all this for me. Now, up the top here, I've got a few OUs here. So um, computers, either these are the computers that are added. So this is the section of which I do have access to. These are the computers that have been added to the domain. Here I've got my user accounts. These are all the user accounts which are attached to my Azure Active Directory. And then there's the ADDS domain admins OU. All right, so the other thing that I wanna show you just quickly too, what you have access to is group policy. Okay, let's open up the group policy management console in here. Now, part of this managed domain in my virtual network in Azure, it allows me to have access to configure group policy, which group policy, it's it's like desired state configuration, isn't it? But this is what you're all used to. And the benefit, again, you don't have to worry about managing it yourself. It's managed for you. However, you can come in here and you can create group policies. And so here's my computers OU where the computers are. I can go through here, there, there's a default group policy already attached to that OU. And then go through here and go create GPO in this domain and link it here. And I can go through the motions as normal, give it a name as what you're used to and add group policy to it. So there you go. That's a demonstration of Azure AD domain services, which is a managed Active Directory full-blown in the cloud attached to your Azure virtual network.